Hey guys, Luna here with a new video for the channel. How are you doing today? Today we have another discography review. I've done quite a few of this in my channel already. Today is Beyonce's turn. Why Beyonce? Well, basically she just released a new album, an album that I really, really, really enjoyed. But the thing is that it wasn't available. I couldn't make a review about it. So now that I'm a little late on the album review, I thought that maybe I could just put the whole thing in a video and review every single album that she has released up to this point. The thing with Beyonce is even though she has been around for about, I don't know, 20 years or something like that, or even more actually, she only has seven studio albums. We don't have many albums to choose from. The reason for this is that often, you know, you don't see another Beyonce album uh, without a change. Every time that she jumps into music again, he, she has something new to offer. It's not that type of thing where you just have to, you know, release an album because you need money. Because of this, her discography is almost flawless. I'm not gonna say that every album is good. I'm not gonna say that it's just all masterpieces, but something that it's true is that Beyonce doesn't really have a bad album. Because her discography is such an interesting thing, I decided that I will make a video ranking every single studio album from worst to best. Now, please remember that this is only my personal opinion. So if you have your own, leave it down below in the comments and I'll make sure to check it out. With that being said, let's just go on with number seven. The reason why I put B-Day at number seven, it isn't really because I don't like the album. I'm not really a fan of this album, I'm not gonna lie. I'm not gonna sit here and say that this album is good because if, from my point of view, it isn't. The thing is that this is Beyonce's second album and you can tell in every single song that she's trying to improve everything she did in the past record. And that only causes that the album is extremely similar, but this time with you know a less amount of ideas. It is true that many of the songs in this one are way more energetic and better produced in a certain way and the vocal performance is also great but even though as i said before this seems like an attempt to copy and paste everything she did before she also tries to add some new things in there in songs like ring the alarm and free come dress those songs are horrible really don't match with the rest of the album and the result is not really a bad album but just an album that when you go back to it just feels unimportant it's unconsequential nothing new came out of that album and the things that were new are just useless the best songs in this album are the one uh, featured by jc not really because of jc it's just that the chemistry between uh beyonce and jc is really amazing so up upgrade you and deja Vu are you know my favorite picks from this from this album other than that you know even though vocal performance is good production is good the songwriting isn't interesting at all so this whole album even though it's really energetic and it has a good pace it's boring really boring Now we have four, and I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me putting four so low on the list. I know that a lot of people lo love this album, but the thing is that I don't really see the reasons why so many people like it. For me, Beyonce tried to approach songwriting in this album in a way where if it's not weird or if it's not, uh, you know, innovative inside her own songwriting process it's not gonna go which is a shame my favorite song from beyonce is in this album love on top i love that song i think it's her best song by far and i know that beyonce has done way better songs from the songwriting perspective but for me you know the the, the flow of the song the way that she performs my favorite uh, vocal performance for from her everything about the track just feels like it, it it's beyonce you know just feel like it, it, it that song was written for her if someone was supposed to sing that song it was her and only her the rest of the cuts in this album just feels like Beyonce trying so hard to be part of this modern era of music, you know, with electronic music taking, you know, taking the lead in, in the music industry. And the result of that is basically, I don't know, imagine Whitney Houston singing an Skrillex song. That's not going to sound good. While I do appreciate everything that she tried to do on this album, I feel like it didn't really work out. And actually, she tried the same thing on the album that came after this one and did it way better. So yeah, this album for me is not doing it.
Number five, I'm going to put Dangerously in Love. I don't really know why people criticize this album so much. The reasons why I enjoy this album are pretty much clear, you know. This is basically where I think Beyonce had the best songwriting in terms of soul music of her whole career. Even if the songs were generic, even if the songs were made only with the, you know, with the intention of selling the music, I don't really mind it. The songs are good, you know, the vocal performance is great. This is their, the last album where Beyonce had that Destiny Child's voice. Voice, that louder pitched voice and the soul tunes just match with that voice way better I feel like I really enjoy the energetic tracks like crazy in love and dangerously in love be with you is also an amazing track me myself and I I mean I don't really find a tune that I dislike about this album and this album came out before Beyonce tried to do something more electronic or pop oriented even if you want to call it background music it's good background music so you know what I'll take it number five for me I think this album is good at number four we have I Am Sasha Fierce and the reason why I put this at number four and not lower is because I think that even though the tracks don't really work well with each other on this album, if you take the songs individually this is probably one of her best projects. Some of her most beautiful songs are on this album, for example Broken Hearted Girl, Halo, you know, a track that has been overplayed to death and it still sounds beautiful. And then you have the more energetic side of this album, you know, the such a fear side of this album in songs, for example, like uh, Single Ladies, a song that everyone knows, the, 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 you know, the infamous moment at the Grammys with Kanye West and Taylor Swift. And then you have the track Divas, I don't really like that song as much, but it does carry out that energetic feel the album starts to get at that point. So if I like the tracks from this album, then why the album isn't higher on the list? But the thing is that put into the album, the track list doesn't make sense. I think it's the worstly organized album in the whole list. It's important, even if you have good songs, you have to arrange them correctly in order for them to, you know, go well with each other. In this album, they didn't give a fuck. They knew they had a lot of singles, so they just put it out there and that's the album. That is a mistake. Most of the songs sound like they shouldn't be where they are. And I think that rearranged in a different way, this album could have been way better and cutting off a few tracks too. So yeah, that's the reason why it's number four, but there are some of the best Beyonce songs on this album, including for example, If I Were a Boy. So I definitely recommend this album. I don't think it's a good album still, but I do believe that it's a decent album. It has good songs in it. So if you're a fan and you haven't heard this album, then I definitely recommend it. I know that for a lot of people this is number one, but I don't really understand why. I think this is miles, miles away from number two in terms of quality. Because even though some of the most popular Beyonce tracks are in here, and you know, for example, tracks like Haunted or Blue, Drunken Love, Petition, you know, this album has a lot of variety. The fact that you have a lot of variety in your album, is do it doesn't make it a good album. Actually, if you don't know how to add the variety properly, you're just gonna make a mess. And that's what happened with this album. Album. So while every single song on the album is good, uh, debatable, but let's say it is, it's not focused. It sounds like a compilation album. It sounds like they, you know, each individual track sounds like it belonged on a different album, on a different era of her career. It does a better job arranging the songs than, you know, the I Am Such a Fierce album, the album previous to this one. If you take the tracks individually, maybe I can agree on the fact that this is her best album. Still, here we're talking about the albums, here we're talking about the finished project, and, you know, the finished project is not good. Or maybe saying it's not good is exaggerating. The album is a good album, but compared to what comes next on this list, it falls short, really short. At number two, we have Lemonade. Yes, it is not number one. What the fuck am I thinking? The thing is that when Lemonade dropped, I, I, I was, it was pretty clear to me that this was way better than anything she had released before. If you take the tracks individually, then maybe you can say, no, it's not. Beyonce is better, I Am Sasha Fierce is better. I guess you can say that, you know, the, the songs in this album are not as iconic as the songs in, in, in the previous albums released before Lemonade. 
Fine. You know what? I agree with you. But the thing is that as an album, this makes way more sense, if not complete sense. Even if you don't want to admit it, the album tells you a story. A story that is engaging, a story that is not only told by the lyrics, but also in the music. A story of empowerment, a story of heartbreak. It was great to see, you know, the evolution, how the album makes the transition from heartbreak to acceptance, to happiness, to then forgiven and then back together. But that's, you know, from the context of the album. The music also slaps. For me, this is the best produced album that she has released, even better than the one uh, in, in, the, in the top of the list. Because I don't really know how the production went in this album, but to me, I can hear her in the album, you know. I can hear that she was present in the recording sessions and in the production and in everything. I mean, I can hear Beyonce being involved, not only with the vocals, but also with the instrumentation, with the production, even with the marketing of the album. Everything felt pretty organic and pretty connected to the artists. So that is the reason why maybe 2016 was my favorite moment from Beyonce. Say. But in terms of music quality, you know, in terms of the album, I have one more album that I like more than this one. But for now, I can tell you that the highlights of this album are definitely Sorry, Formation, Hold Up. Each of them individually sound amazing, but they work better than ever inside the album when you listen to it inside the album. Okay, so definitely, if you haven't heard this album, it, you know, everyone has. But if you haven't, then I definitely recommend for you to do it because this is one of the best albums from last decade. I'm really scared of putting this album here. The difference between this one and, and Lemonade is not that much. Maybe I'm falling victim to the hype, but I've, you know, I've heard this album quite a few times already and you know, my decisions stay strong. I think this is the most solid and you know, the best album released by Beyonce to date. And the reason why is because even though Lemonade, you know, keeps everything inside a context and they it works really well, I still feel like that album was made still from the point of view of making a few hits for the year and for the tour and move on. Instead, I feel like this album was purely made with the intention of making a whole experience a whole album that people can focus on, no hits, okay, no tracks that stand out from the others, a whole one hour consistent experience where people can say, okay, I'm listening to a 61 minute song instead of a collection of songs. This is the first time that we see her taking on house music and disco music and a little bit of R&B as well. It's still the same girl, you know, it's still the same voice, it's still the same creativity, it's still the same artist, but now in a new style and I think that she is really comfortable in this new lane of music. Now, of course, this album is nowhere near perfect, you know, it has a lot of flaws, for example, there are a few songs in there that are just too much for me. For example, Church Girl and Plastics Off of Sofa, I, I, I don't really like those songs. But apart from those tracks, you know, I feel like every single other song on this album focuses more on continuing the track that came before and, and introducing the track that comes uh, after instead of making, you know, a, an individual song. I personally loved it. I, I enjoyed every single track and the ones that I didn't enjoy didn't really matter to me. I'm really excited to see what she has next, you know, with the new album. Knowing Beyonce, I know that minimum we'll have to wait like three, four years because we waited six years for this shit to drop. But you know what? If the albums are going to be like this, it's totally worth the wait. But as of today, I can tell you 100% sure this is her best album. I'm a bit scared. I'm a bit scared. I often, I fall back into the hype sometimes, but you know, I feel confident right now. So yes, number one, definitely her best album. That will be it for today's video, guys. I really hope that you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and leave a like down below and subscribe to the channel so you don't miss any other videos that I upload. This is not my first video ranking someone's discographies. I've actually ranked the discographies of many other artists. So if you want to see that, then go ahead and check it out. I would honestly like to see your ranking as well. So please leave it down below and tell me your opinions on my ranking. I would like to know which one is it you think it's the best Beyonce album, which one is the worst one. I know a lot of people are going to disagree with me in terms of where I put uh, Beyonce's self-titled album. I know that's pretty much her most popular record, but yeah, let's see what you have to say. With that being said, guys, I really hope that you enjoyed it and that we can see each other soon in another video. But until then, bye.